I'm Vicki Burrells, my daughter Brooke Burrells. She is age 11. Um, she has glucose transporter deficiency, which is also called GLUT1DS. It's uh, very rare, it's a genetic mutation. She was the 83rd in the world to be diagnosed. She was born full term, no complications, no, um, she was born on her due date, eight pounds, seven ounces, everything was great. So we went home the next day and thought everything was fine. And then as an infant, she just failed to develop. She didn't uh, have uh, much muscle control, head control. Her mouth was open a lot. She didn't really play with toys. She had no interests, things like that. Um, we wondered about her development probably around four or five months, but just thought, well, maybe she's, you know, she'll catch up or whatever. And that's pretty much what the pediatrician said is, you know, give it time, kids develop at their own pace. But she just kind of had a different look about her. And then at six months, she showed, showed no signs of being able to sit up and at nine months, you know, not crawling or anything. And then um, at nine months, she had her first seizure. It was a, like an eye darting seizure. And then that's kind of when we started the whole gamut of uh, neurological testing at Children's Hospital in Milwaukee and process of elimination. It just kept coming up CP and we didn't know why she had CP or when it was caused. And then um, when she was six, we had uh, our neurologist at Children's in Milwaukee said that she shows similar symptoms to this GLUT1 DS and he said it's very rare we can test her, she probably doesn't have it, but you know, it's a long shot, but let's not leave any stone unturned type thing. So we went ahead with the test, it was just a blood test, and they, her doctor is in New York, and they sent it there, and it was a positive uh, GLUT1 diagnosis, and then they, they verified it with a lumbar puncture to test how much glucose is in her blood, or in her cerebral spinal fluid, and it's, almost non-existent and that's what your brain needs for nutrition and for fuel so all this time her brain wasn't receiving the nutrition like ours does because the glucose isn't being transported from the bloodstream to the spinal fluid that's where the problem lies that's the genetic mutation that caused her uh, problems I found several different places around the world, um, but wasn't comfortable with a whole lot of them as far as some use the embryonic stem cells, and I, I knew we didn't want to do that. And um, we found this, uh, the BICA group and, and decided that this looked like the most uh, reputable and safest option for us. So another family from Wisconsin and I started to really you know, dig into it, see who we could talk to, and, and get our questions answered. And then um, that's when we decided to come. That was the first time was uh, in 2007. We're here for a month the first time, and then we got home, and she, um, she her balance had improved greatly. Her uh, mot motoric planning as far as, you know, getting the job done, she knows what she wants her body to do, but it's like she has a hard time planning it. That was better. Um, she had never been able to use her canes before. She started walking with her canes by herself, and now she walks with one cane. And that, I'm sure, was all directly related to the stem cells without question, because we had tried and tried and tried, and there was just no, there was no way she was gonna figure it out. A lot less whining. She used to whine, like, constantly. It was just, because that was all she really had, eh, eh, you know. And, you know, we'd say, use your words, and she might have one or two words, you know, for specific situations. But then she got to where she was putting some words together, and um, she was more content to, to entertain herself, sit and look through a book. Um, her memory improved, uh, because we would be talking about someone or something or an event that happened, and she would say words pertaining to that, and it may have been a year ago. Um, and we never saw that before. It was just like, it clicked, you know, and she was, uh, um, 
which is exciting. You know, you look back through pictures and I often wonder, does she remember all this stuff? And you can tell she clearly does. I think one of the biggest things is with her canes, um, when she's in her walker, she's independent. You know, she can go down the halls at school, you can tell her go to the office, go to the speech room, whatever. And she's on her own by herself. And you know, that's great, but in real life, I mean, there's always there's going to be stairs. There's going to be times when the walker doesn't go places. And a good example is last summer was the first time she could walk in our yard without help because she could use her canes. She can't use her walker in the grass, but it was like the first time she could, you know, walk in her own backyard at uh, 10 years old. It's it's hard for families. You know, we you get to know the other families here, and everybody's got their story and. And it's not easy to get here, it's not easy to make the decision, but once you're here, I think they really help you to realize that there is hope 